Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Maligayang Pasko. Happy holidays to all of all of you who are worshiping online. Shall we all rise and greet one another? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. Are we ready to, ready to welcome our baby Jesus? Amen. Are we ready to let him in in our hearts? Amen. Are we ready to worship God? Yes. Let us all pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, we thank you God for this wonderful day. Indeed, this is the day that you have made, Lord, that your uh, promise uh, became true, Lord God, that our Lord Jesus Christ came to earth, Lord. Lord, as we celebrate this morning the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we honor you and glorify you, and may you welcome, may we welcome you, Lord, in our hearts, in our church, in our lives. Oh, Lord God, Lord, help us to celebrate this Christmas, Lord, by forgiving one another. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness and cleansing, Lord God from all our sins and all our failures, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you for cleansing us, O oh Lord God. Thank you and we honor you and we give you all the glory and the honor and the power in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Let us together welcome our, our baby Jesus in our church, in our lives, and in our hearts. Let us join the choir, choir of angels and the multitude of the heavenly host in praising and worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ, the only reason for this season. Amen. In Luke 2, 10 to 12, it says, But the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. When Jesus Christ was born, the shepherds came from the nearby village to worship him. The Bible says that the host of angels worship him. Then time passed, the wise men from the east came to worship Jesus. Church, let's join the worshipers of our baby Jesus, the Christ of Christmas. Only Him deserves to be worshipped and adored. Let us all to give, together give honor and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll praise your name forever. That's right, church. We'll raise your name forever. We'll praise your name forever. Praise the Lord. Let's all together now. We'll praise your name. Praise your name forever. 
The Savior of the world will bring good news of great joy for all people. The angels declare joy. Mary and Joseph were amazed with joy. The wise men were filled with joy. And the shepherds returned with rejoicing in their hearts. Even John the Baptist leaped for joy in Elizabeth's womb. Their brother and sisters let us sing joyfully to our risen King. Amen. To the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive the King. Amen. Let every heart be made room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. Sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Amen. That's right, church. Joy to the world. We will sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. Savior reign, let me the song reply. Rock seals and floods, rock seals and play. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat, repeat the sounding. That's why we will sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Amen. Joy to the world. We will sing, sing, sing. We will sing. continue to worship your Lord God. We continue to sing praises unto your name. Church, let us all join the shepherds in proclaiming the good news everywhere. 
Let us go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Go and tell it on the mountain. That's right. Everywhere. Go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds give the watching, or silence laughs by night, behold around the heavens. Show the holy light. What shall we do? Go on and tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go and tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds be the temple. When low above the earth rang out the angel chorus, the hand of Savior's birth. That's my right, church. Tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Down in the road of nature, the humble Christ was born. And says in isolation, the blessed Christmas Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Give him praise, church. Give him praise. Amen. 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 In John 1 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory as the only Son from the Father full of grace and truth. This is the day that we celebrate the fulfillment of God's promise to us. Amen.
Son Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, and we are so grateful for coming into our hearts and making our hearts your home. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we honor you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A very warm good morning, church, and Merry Christmas to all of you. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord on this Sunday, Christmas Day. It doesn't happen very often, does it? That Sunday, Christmas Day falls on a Sunday. And so we are indeed thankful to God for the opportunity to worship Him together on Christmas Day. Now would you turn to your neighbor and say, The Savior is born for you this day. Amen, amen. Surely later on we'll be filled with people unless they're all about to come. But it's good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. And if you have your programs with you, we have a packed program this morning and we shall proceed with a responsive scripture reading. You know, one of the things that is part of our tradition at home is to make sure that we reflect and remember the Christmas story. We read Luke 2, Matthew 1 and 2, every year in order to refresh ourselves with a Christmas story. And in the church, we do likewise. And so we're going to read the scriptures responsively. I'm going to read the odd verses in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. And then you read the even numbered verses. Would you all rise as we read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14? A copy of it is in the bulletin, but it's also in our monitor this morning. So let's read Luke 2, verses 1 through 14. Now it came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. And all were proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, 
and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news to the great joy, which shall be for For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Please be seated. Father, we thank you that today we can honor our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our King. We thank you that today... Your church can gather together to remember that great day, to show your love for the world, sending your only begotten Son to be born in a manger so that all would be within the reach of his grace. We thank you that that ordinary night turned to be extraordinary because the Savior has been born for all men and women. And so thank you for reaching to us that we've seen the light, we've seen that star shine so bright, the gospel has come to us. We have received the Lord Jesus into our hearts, and today we worship him with all that we are. And so we ask your blessing upon our time together today. Thank you for all that will transpire to turn on that spotlight on that baby born in the manger who would one day grow up sinless, and go to the cross to carry our sin, and then rise again to give us hope for all eternity. And so we thank you that even today, through our trials, tribulations, whatever they may be, they are paling dim in the light of the glory of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, bless us today as we celebrate your goodness, your faithfulness to us, the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen and amen.
to folks, all working with the will. The kitchen were burning goody spill. Turkey roasting in the pan. It's peace on earth and goodwill to man. It's loved ones coming through the door, exchanging gifts and so much more. It's following still that Christmas star and knowing that where you are, the manger scene is just as near today as it was that first year. That Christ was born on Christmas Day, a babe to lead us all the way. Today, He is that Christmas star, our guiding light that shines afar. The angels heralded in His birth, and mortal man knew not His worth. They let Him in a manger lay, and sheltered those with earthly pain. But wise men and their shepherds came to pay great homage to His name. He gave his life that we might live, so let us to our homage give. That is what Christmas means to me. It's gold and glitter on the tree. It's Christ suspended on the cross to save us from eternal loss. Let's make a resolution here to be a witness while we're here. Let's put the Christ in Christmas now and in his presence humbly bow.
from the east. The king of kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. 
Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim. Right. Good morning, and Merry Christmas to all. Um, Merry Christmas. So what I need you to do at this moment is to take a moment and work with me, help me out. I need some time to set up. So I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor just real quick, both not only to the side, but front, back, and maybe two rows back to give me enough time, right, to make sure you say Merry Christmas and say something nice to each other, would you? Let's go. Let's go. All right, once again, Merry Christmas to you all. Um, it's a nice day out. Um, it's wonderful. Um, looking out, it's 85 degrees. I don't know if you know. What a Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> but for us Californians, we can't uh, welcome such a, any better weather than this because we were actually getting pretty chilled, right, for the past couple of weeks. And it's great to have this weather. Um, we are here with today. The topic is welcoming the king welcoming the king, and we want to actually read a few more scriptures past what we just read in the responsive reading. So turn with me, Luke chapter 2, verses 16 through 20, and I'm just going to go ahead and read for us for sake of time. Verses 16 through 20, and they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen him, they made known the statement which they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as has been told them. Amen. That's the word of God for today. Let me just pray for us just one more time. God, we welcome you, Savior, as we have seen through the amazing video. Just the whole message of this is so real. Lord, it didn't just happen 2,000 years ago, but this is happening for us right now. So we embrace the coming of the King into our hearts, into our church, into our local neighborhood, into our world. So welcome, Jesus. We celebrate and we give you praise and help us to focus on what is in your heart for this day here. God, we praise you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen, uh, I am someone who needs to be able to draw from the scripture what it means to me. I just can't read it as a story. I don't want to talk about something that just nearly happened long, long time ago, that has no relevance to me. I'm always someone who tries to find some application behind what I can plug into me right now, right? And so I kind of wrestle with this, and um, I want to just impose hopefully a meaningful application to us all as we arrive to the Christmas day together, right? So this is it, the scene of Christmas, not quite in California, but imagine hard, and you'll start seeing snow, all right? And that's where we're at, Christmas day. Um, 
we spend time with family, friends, loved ones. Last night, my, my Facebook was lovely because every scroll I see is some families celebrating together with matching cute pajamas, making faces at each other. It was nice. My family didn't do that, but <laughs> it was good to see that happening because it's the season, you know? Streets are bright with Christmas decoration to celebrate the season. Everywhere we go, we know it's Christmas time because the world celebrates with decorative, you know, such as this. And if you go down any populated areas, the downtowns, you know, you will occasionally see even greater decoration out there, right? Makes us know it's Christmas. It's great. Might I remind you, but the first scene of Christmas had rather a humble appearance than how it is celebrated today. Now, I want to just take you back, even though you know this story, just use your imag imagination a lot today, because I want you to find God's heart behind this day as he is sending his son down to earth. It was a very humble beginning, but nonetheless, there was still a celebration then as well. You know, only a few people recognized, maybe because it was the first time ever, right? What's there to know? For us, we had plenty of practices about Christmas. That's why every Christmas, it seems like the decorations get better. I remember when we first came to America, my brother claims he has invented a kind of Christmas light. Ready? Right? My brother's five years older than me. He's pretty bright. He's pretty bright and creative, but I don't think he's quite there, but he claims, he claims that when he came, there was no other Christmas light that does a drizzle. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah? It was just a single light, and my brother claims he's the first to tie it together and make it look like, a, you know, the rainfall, the snowfall and stuff. And we were the first house ever in the whole world. And the whole world caught on after that, right? <laughs> now I go to neighborhoods, and I see some lights. It's just crazy. Like, I, I don't... I don't know where people had the money, you know? They just put on light shows just right out their backyard, or sorry, it's the front, and it's amazing. Every year it gets better, but mind you, the first time, the humble beginning, it's because not many people knew. Only a handful of people came along. Even so, Jesus' arrival was actually foreseen by the scriptures and its prophecies. Those who came, they knew for certain that this was going to happen. How do they know? I don't know. They must have had some kind of a lead behind it. You know, now it's not so much of a news. When you look at Black Friday sale, for example, how many guys had a good time there? Cyber Monday? <laughs> yeah? Cyber Monday is better, apparently, because Black Friday is just played out now. It's washed out. Cyber Monday is when you have better deals. Listen, I, I have a Best Buy account. And I don't do so much shopping there, but apparently I got on their good side because they started sending me emails that says, exclusive to top members only. <laughs> Have you ever gotten these kind of emails? <laughs> right? And you get shocked. You're like, wow, I, I'm in. I know something special that not everybody knows. And when that happens, I'm chasing these, these deals. Because why? Because I'm in. I know something more special. Are you with me? Perhaps these guys were like that. They were somehow in with the information. They knew the exclusive deal that was about to happen while nobody else knew, right? And they happened to tell some friends, like, you know, our good old Asian culture that we have. Like, you know, I don't know if you know about Koreans. We're, we're notorious about if you find something nice, you tell your whole neighborhood about it, you know? And you bring everybody to buy that same sale product and realize that wasn't actually a sale going on. It was a scam. But anyway, the point is, we do the same kind of thing that basically these guys did. They went after what was exclusive to them, and they brought some people, still a handful. And there was a celebration at that time. Sad about this, I thought about this last night, thinking, wow, if I were there at Jesus' time, at this birth time, would I be there? My friends, can I ask you the same question? Where would you be in the time of Jesus? Now, of course, it's an imaginative um, scenario, but would I have known the day of Jesus' birth and arrival? Because today, I know where to go for fancy lights display. You know, in any moment, my family could be like, hey, Dad, take us to a nice lighting show neighborhood. Then I, I, I'll know basically where to go, 
But I have another ways to know too, the search engine conveniently called Google. I search out where is the best lights out there and I could find the right places to go. You know, if you think about Jesus' triumphal entry to Jerusalem, which happens years after, but when that happens, notice that not everybody's in that town square welcoming Jesus coming in, but those who knew about it, they were right on it. They didn't just show up. They came in with the right tools. They came in with the perfect attires. They came in knowing what to recite and sing together for some odd reason. Is it a miracle? I don't know. Me personally, I don't think Bible stories are all just miracles. It's reality. With obviously a hint of God, if not a whole spoonful of God. And that you may call it a miracle. But what I'm trying to say is it's people to people, man to man. It's just like how we live today, that reality settling back then too. What I'm saying is these guys who entered into the place watching Jesus march in, popping out their palm branches, and all of a sudden singing Hosanna to the highest, is not just a mere coincidence, but they must have known something. Are you kind of following what I'm saying? They must have known something. Again, the question is, would I care to know where to go? And that's the first question that I want to ask you and try to think about. Would I care to know where to go? Would I be where Jesus is? Or would I be like any rest of the people. My mom actually, oh my goodness, I guess I'm tired. My wife, <laughs> who acts like my mom at times, of course, right, complained to me yesterday. She said, we don't celebrate Christmas. And she's right. I don't really, <laughs> we, we don't celebrate Christmas as others do. And I was thinking about this. Would I have been there where Jesus was? Because I genuinely dislike crowded places. I don't. I don't like to do this like special festivity stuff too much. This is crazy me. I, I just don't enjoy it too much. Especially when people are crowded in for some celebration. Even when my hero of all time, the goat of my life, when Kobe Bryant has passed, so many of my students ask, Pete, you're not going to go? I really wanted to go to Staples Center for that celebration. I don't know what to call it. Do you call that celebration of his life, I suppose? Memorial, I guess that's a better word. I, I really wanted to go because I'm like, my, my wife knows this, that I'm, I'm being honest, for a couple of nights, I was just scrolling through and just watching Kobe nonstop and just kind of like shedding a tear here and there when my wife's not watching. Because he, he meant a lot to me. He was my hero. Forget Iron Man. This guy would kick his butt, right? And I was just like, oh man, I should go, but I just didn't because I hate going to crowded places. So I watched it on, I don't know, whatever channel it was and just kind of like crying on my own. But listen, had it been for Jesus' arrival, had I only known, I would try to be there by every means, by every effort I can make. Do you agree? Amen. Right? That's why you're here, right? This Christmas day when you could have easily spent drinking hot cocoa in this morning, eating something nice with your family, you chose to be here because of the same reason. Amen. Amen. The treasure that Mary had in her heart was actually coming from many different incidents in setting up for the delivery of baby Jesus. I want to talk about this too. Mary was visited by the angel according to Luke chapter 1 verse 30 and 37. Was told about Jesus being conceived in her womb. And it was a crazy story. But she's just listening to this, taking it all in. But when angel finished revealing the full plan, Mary's response in chapter 1, verse 38 goes something like this. Just easier term for us to take is, she says, I am a servant to God's will. That's what she says. After having heard all these things. Kind of crazy. And she goes, may it be done to me according to your word. Mary had a different attitude about hearing this Christmas story. And she must have, till the very day of the delivery, held on to this promise about the words described to her. This formed her attitude towards what became known. Now, in today's scripture, this is kind of reflected here. 
The shepherds came to share what the angels revealed to them about the Savior who was born, who is the promised Messiah and the Christ whom everyone was waiting for. This was the dude that everybody has waited for, for history and history. When he arrived, the angels wanted to make a point to the shepherds saying, listen, I'm going to prove to you that this is the Messiah. Right? And he says, I'm going to point you to exactly where baby Jesus is going to be lying in the manger in the exact way that he's going to be. You'll find him exactly this way. And lo and behold, that was chapter 1, verse 18. The angels led the shepherds. Shepherds go and then they find the baby Jesus laying there in that same way. And everybody was amazed at what was being told at that moment. Wow, that's great. I had to look, look, if you look at verse 19 with me of chapter 2, it says something, I actually, I'm going to take you one, one verse back and we're going to read from verse 18. Okay, read with your eyes and just find something special here, right? 18, and all who heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. Right? Do you, do you see some different attitude in Mary? This is the Mary that God chose to become the vessel, the womb that's going to conceive Jesus. It's not just by coincidence. I want you to know there must be something behind it. And this attitude of Mary saying, I'm going to treasure this. I'm going to ponder on this. Listen, it's no, no magic. Let's just break it down. What does it mean, Mary deciding to treasure this deep in her heart? It means she's going to keep it as a treasure and protect it. When you have treasure, you don't just lay it out. I, I should not tempt you with this, but I, I know you see this right here. This is one of my treasure right here. <laughs> okay? What I will guarantee you is you'll never see this thing laying around by itself. Okay? It always goes with me. Some people call me out on this. Pastor, we're just going to get some coffee at Starbucks. It'll just be five minutes. Why don't you leave it in the car? You will never see me leave it in the car. Why? Because this is my treasure. Are you with me? Do you have possessions like that? Anything? Sure you do. And when you do, you treasure it. You keep it. And notice, Mary treasures this fact in her heart. And not only there, my version, NASB, says she starts pondering to keep this in her heart. What does pondering mean? To remember, to reinstate this in her heart as she is reminding herself to keep it fresh all the time. That's what treasure is. Look, this thing right here, I don't know if you know or not, figured it out, it's my instrument right here, violin, my fiddle, right? I make sure I keep it in top-notch shape. I wipe the sucker down, I change the strings whenever it needs. I go through maintenance because without it, this thing is going to collect dust and it's going to devalue as it goes. It may not even play the same. Understand what I'm saying? Mary carried a very different attitude. And mind, I remain, remind us all. At the day when Jesus was crucified, basically everybody deserted. Mary didn't. She was one of the few. The people that remained with Jesus at that time were special few people with special backgrounds. There was a prostitute who was won over by Jesus' grace. I get it. You're indebted. But Mary perhaps lived her whole life, right, thinking about it. She's the mom, right? And I get it. If you're the mom, you're going to be there. Yeah, but at the same time, she could have thought the least out of this moment too. But she treasured and kept it pondered in her heart what is it that she's remembering the fact that this christmas the birth of jesus was all about the promise of god unfolding she treasured and kept in her heart so i ask you first question would i have been there would i be where jesus would be born second question is how would i respond to jesus birth how would you respond to jesus birth are you just going to hear this and be amazed that's what most of us do christmas Ooh, lights whoo or is there something you treasure in your heart year after year and you ponder, you think about it, you keep it alive so that each time it comes, it comes back to you more stronger, 
Matter of fact, that's exactly what happened to Mary's life. A few chapters forward, if you look at what Mary sees, she always beholds Jesus as a son of God. That's a blessing, you know. It's not a religion. It's a blessing. She's living it differently. I ask you, if you were to ask me, which child, oh man, are my kids here? Which child do you honestly enjoy taking to places? I have, actually have an answer for that. Are my sons here? No, right? <laughs> it's always, and you'll probably agree as a parent, it's always that one who appreciates the event and activity more than the others. Isn't that true? It's always that kid who goes, Dad, that was the best thing ever. I wish I could go and play the arcade games one more time. That makes me think next time, oh man, I should, take, should make some time to bring him to arcade. Lately, one of the boys sitting down started asking, Dad, after retreat, there's going to be snow, right? I was like, I don't know about snow, but he's like, well, we should find snow. We should go. Remember that time we were going to Lake Forest? We got stuck because it was snowing so hard. So we stopped at a pizza store, but behind the pizza store, there was a hill that nobody was there. I remember going on the sled, and we did that for three hours. We should do that again. <laughs> and I told my son, son, have some mercy, dude. Mom and dad, we finish retreat. We're driving back. We are tired, not like you. We need some rest. How dare you say, on the way back, go to Lake Forest, which is another direction. But after having said that, you know what? We put the boys to sleep. Me and my wife sat down. We talked about when we are going to be able to do that with the boys. Isn't that the parent's heart? Guess what? So is God the Father. You know what I'm saying, guys? God the Father works the same way. He looks at each one of our heart and sees what you are treasuring in your heart for this Christmas. What are you pondering? What are you making the most out of, of this season? And God wants to go after that treasure. Again, I ask you, how would I respond in Jesus' birth? How and what does Christmas mean to me? It is one thing to be there where Jesus came, but I also want to be the one who receives the most out of meeting Jesus. If you agree, can you say amen? Amen. amen. And then what is left? What else is left? Celebrate. Bring your gifts. We see the shepherds joyfully singing and praising God. It's not a new dance. I'm just trying to catch somebody's attention here. Okay, <laughs> I thought this also was very important. Last scene, and we're done. As we are connecting the joy of what has been witnessed with our desire, I'm sorry, as we are connecting at that moment to seeing Jesus come, we have to look into the shepherd's response, which is to praise him. It's our desire to give to God what we can. In Matthew's gospel, the wise men have brought their gifts to Jesus. You remember that story? Kind of mentioned it slightly last week. It's a little bit different take on it of different time. I didn't think the significance was in the monetary value of these gifts. Do you think? It's not about how treasureful this gift must have been. But notice these guys simply brought from what they had of their importance. of that, their, their priority of that gift was just simply being presented before Jesus. It's not about how expensive and how treasureful this thing must have been by cost i want to bring this up lately i've been having a struggle and actually god helped me overcome this because y'all know by now i play some music a little bit and that was what i started off with i play violin there came a point of time when I told myself, all right, I'm going to be a musician that just gives glory to God. And I started working my butt off. But another season came over my life where I received God's calling to minister and go into God's work in church, in mission field, and whatever, in all that means. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And in order to do it, I'm going to let go of everything else and I'm going to go all in on this. So for a good period of seven years, seven, eight years, I just stopped playing violin. I did. I let go of it. Because I felt like it was obstructing. It was going against God's calling for me. Out of nowhere, though, 
God started opening doors. This personal story, I'm sorry to bore you with it. But personally, God started asking me to open the door for me to play music in different formats of what you may call a ministry. Because I'm playing for church. I'm playing for a concert in benefit of healing of something of the people groups that I'm playing for. But it was starting to bother me because I was becoming a full-time minister. I'm now ordained as a reverend. All these things. So the struggle in me is, God, what am I supposed to do with this? Do with this? Right here. I don't know what to do with this because I, I know you're opening door for me to play, but shouldn't I be focusing on ministering, being a pastor? God gave me a kind impression in my heart. Simple. Asking me, Daniel, didn't you want to give me glory with all that you have, with all that you have been given? Simple thing, thought about it. The more I thought about it, it kind of started rocking me deep. <laughs> because I realized I put it in a box when it comes to service and giving to God and praising. I think about a format of how it needs to follow. I need to go up on stage and do a special song, do something nice. But God simply just saying, no, just give from what you have. At the moment of the encounter, respond to God. Give your gifts, whatever you got. And it kind of became a different message for me whenever I grab the violin now. Especially in the context of a church where I should be preaching, I grab the violin and I play. It's a message, especially to our young people, to say that serving God doesn't have an exact form necessarily. Serving God doesn't always have to follow a certain form, but whatever you got, just give it to the Lord. I was so blessed one time giving rides to the seniors. Coming into the prayer warriors, maybe I should do that more. <laughs> but, amen. <laughs> but whenever I did, it was so blessed, so blessing filled experience because they would always tell me of small little things that they've done, but to me, it's like monumental stuff. They're like telling me stories of, oh, I just had like just, you know, like a $2 bill or something, and I was just trying to give to somebody to make sure they receive that opportunity to just, you know, kind of come and maybe get a hint about who, how, God, how good God is. Smallest things to whatever they can, they're always trying to plug in. And I got it. I get it. The gift that we give to God should just be whatever that you can give to God. I bring this up here because Christmas is here. And that moment, Jesus being birthed, Nobody can do anything about to help or to get in the way because God's doing it. But do you notice, and I'm going to close with this, do you notice around this birth, this story, unnecessarily God, shows, uh, God reveals a lot about the response of the people that surrounds this event? Do you notice that? Do you kind of see what I'm seeing? Church, do you? Because it could have just been Jesus came and it was amazing. But actually, it records more about the kinds of people that were drawn in, and they simply responded to this Jesus. As though to say what? Personally, I want to tell you that God was looking forward to this kind of response. To be the basis, the foundation of the Christmas spirit. We may not be able to give the greatest, but hey, it doesn't matter. Think about it. Alone in the manger, in the quiet, nobody there doesn't matter about the circumstance. God just wants your gift in whatever form. God wants you to just remember and be there as you are here today. As we celebrate and we welcome the King, what gift do you got to offer to God? So to close this moment, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I want you to take a moment, imagine now with me the manger, the quiet of the night, baby that was born. There may have been crying, but for the most part, it was quiet. Agreeable? Right? Quiet. In the quiet, unnoticed, insignificant, and the humble beginning of our King, baby Jesus, but out from the manger came forth praises 
of people perhaps out of tune because <laughs> they're shepherds. And who disregarded anything else as importance, whether they were in key, whether it was in pitch, whether it was the right kind of sound or right instru instrumentation, didn't matter. They just responded at that moment, and the Bible records of this for us today, that song, to say, hey, this is what Christmas is all about. Amen. This morning, we had a very funky situation. Sound wasn't on. Sound wasn't on. So some of you guys coming early, you noticed that. Couldn't do a thing about it until right before the worship service, right a minute or two minutes before, it's like God did something. You know what that was? We flipped the switch on <laughs> in the amp. And that was enough. And the sound was ready for the perfect time for us to gather in that praise. You know why I share this? Not to point out the incompetence of our staff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's me. 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 Boo. I know I get it. That's me. That's me. But I'm sharing this because think about it. That Christmas night, the switch had to turn on. Until that switch came on, everything just remained to be quiet. What is that switch? Jesus coming? I agree. But Jesus coming was God intended, but there was a switch that needed to be turned on, and I believe that is the praise of God's people. Forgetting about everything else. So I'm going to ask you, remember I talked to you about bringing your gifts? So I wasn't going to play the violin because my wrist is bad. But I said, God kept poking in my heart. Okay, God, I'll just bring my violin today. And the point I'm trying to make is I'm not going to make a performance. I'm going to ask you to join with me singing praise to God. Okay? Is that all right? Not too bad, right? Whenever you're ready.
Uh, we give you praise. We give you praise that you are due. This is what Christmas is about. Thank you for flicking on that light. Lord, that moment the switch turns on and the praise fills the room. Praise fills the atmosphere. The praise that is due fills the season of Christmas, letting us know what it was all about, what was in the heart of God. Lord, help us to be where Jesus is and help us to mind and ponder to treasure the very life that Jesus you have given to us and help us to celebrate onward with the praises all the rest of the days of our life, giving you our gifts for you are deserving of it all. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Greet one another, would you, for time for the stage to settle. Merry Christmas again, and just I'm so glad to share this moment with you. Hello. In Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, it says, For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. Church, we must all come and adore him. Jesus, 
Amen. Give you praise, church. Give you praise. We love you, Lord, and we welcome you, Lord, in our midst. Thank you, Lord. I trust that you heard God's word to you this morning. It is not just another word. It's not just another story in the Bible. But I pray like Pastor Daniel that the reality of Jesus would be in your heart. That today might be different every day in your life because today you've met the risen Savior. You know, Jesus Christ was not just born as a baby. He will come again as we know. And we are a people who are in between. You know, he was born for us, a savior, but when he comes again, he's going to come as the king and the judge of the world. And only those who are ready for his coming shall be with him forever. And so the challenge for us is, is there the coming of the Messiah in your heart today? And I pray that that rekindled the Christmas story in your heart today. Before we leave, just a few announcements and, of course, to welcome some of our guests. First of all, thank you for coming today to celebrate Christmas. Say to one another again, a joyous and merry, blessed Christmas to you. (laughs) Amen and amen. Now, as you know, the young people are having a retreat. They are leaving on Tuesday, is that correct? Tuesday, they go to Yukaipa at Oak Glen. And so, those of you who haven't signed up yet, you still can, right? It's not too late. Not too late. And so, you still may, but we need to pray for them as well, right? And we're going to be with them together. And so, Tuesday until Friday, when we return, we go to Lake Forest for the snow. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> but at this rate, you know, it's 80 degrees outside later on. I doubt if we'll see some snow in here, maybe fake snow. Anyway, next week, next Sunday is what? Can you imagine? This is our, this is our last Sunday of the year. So next, next Sunday is the first day of the year. And so it's a New Year Sunday celebration. Lord's Supper is going to be special. But remember, it's not a special because there's no koinonia lunch. Well, New Year's Day is special for the family too, right? And so we all have our plans to be with the family. But Flint classes, Sunday school classes for next year, sign up. It's all out there. Courses to take. Sign up now so you may find a place for yourself. Now, we need to welcome our guests today. Number one, Myra De La Vega. Myra, good to have you with us. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas to you. And then we have, welcome back, Ron and Edith Anda. Good to have you back with us. Amen and amen. And we have Mike Jones this morning. Mike, is Mike here somewhere? Mike is somewhere. Okay. Welcome all of you. Mikey Jones. No, we already welcomed Mikey last week. We don't need to welcome him again. Just kidding. (laughs) But everyone is welcome, right? But if you are here for the first time, would you raise your hand? Because we want to welcome you. Right? Nonetheless, there are others who have returned. Welcome back. Good to have you with us, especially this Christmas Day. Now, before I, I dismiss us for today, um, you may not have heard, but we're not online today. We couldn't get online for some reason, but it will be uploaded later on today. I wanted especially to pray for some of us who are in the hospital. Special prayers for Atiflor, praying for Nana Ideli as well, and for others who might be in the bed of sickness. Wanted to pray with them while they were watching, but maybe later they could. So I'm going to close in prayer by praying for them and, of course, providing us a special blessing as we dismiss for today. So shall we rise as we pray? Father, how grateful we are that Christmas is not just a season in the year for merriment, 
but Christmas can be ours every day. We thank you that the Savior came so that those who understand neediness may truly come to him. You know that there is no hope aside from him in this life. We may have all the pleasures in this life, but find out later on it was all for nothing. And so we thank you because you've sent us the one who would meet our deepest need to be in close fellowship with the God who created us, the God who is the creator of the universe, the one who sustains it, the one who knows its very purpose, this world, and the one who will come again in order to bring us into full fellowship with him forever. And so we thank you that that light of the world has shone on our hearts and today we'll welcome him again. But perhaps, Lord, there are some of us here this morning who may not have yielded the throne of their lives to you and I pray that they would not miss this opportunity to receive you indeed, Lord and Savior, the one who carried the sin of the world, the Lamb of God, who sits on the throne forever. Lord, we especially come to you for, for our dear Atiflor, and we ask, Lord, that you give her peace and comfort. Lord, that your presence will be her source of joy and hope, such that as she ushers into eternity, your hand is holding her. Pray for Koyalando and the rest of the family and ask that you sustain them, that you give them your peace that no one can provide. You give them the comfort that only comes from your grace. For Nanai Deli and as well as others who may not be around because of some sickness, Lord, may your healing touch be upon them. For some of us who are carrying heavy burdens, Lord, we lift them up to you. You are the one who cares for us. All these cares are yours. Thank you. We need not worry because you care for us and love us. And so now, Lord, as we depart from this place, we thank you for your presence with us all the time. Wherever we are, whatever it takes, you are with us. And so now, receive the Lord's blessing upon your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you grace and give you peace. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we celebrate this day the birth of our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Hello, Myra. <laughs>